Hey, what's up? My name is Nick and welcome to Angry Review. Today we're going to be reviewing two monitors from LG, the Ultra Fine series. On the one side we have the 500 and the other one is the 880 Ergo. One is $350, the other one is $700, which is double the price, yet they look almost identical. So, what is the difference? Well, let's find out. We can start off by breaking down the LG's naming convention. LG, Life's Good, previously named Gold Star, now LG. It has these two monitors, which are the 32UN500-W and the 32UN880 slash W. Now, what does this soup of numbers mean? So you have the first number, the 32 is the 32 inches. It could be 27, 34, 32. These both monitors are 32 inches. Then you have the U, um, the ultra fine series. There's also the G for ultra gear, which is more geared towards gamers. And then there is the W for ultra wide for the wide screen monitors. Then the next letter is N and that refers to the year in which these monitors were manufactured. N is 2020, P is 2021, and then there's L for 2019 and K for 2018. Right, so far so good. Now we're getting to the panel number or the panel series. So we've got the 500, 600 and missing the 7, 800 series. It's the quality of the panel. That's how good the panel is. This is where it gets to, you know, <laughs> this is what you're really buying here. Um, this is the 500 series panel and um, it's an VA panel. <laughs> it's maybe not as good as this. Uh, this is the IPS panel and the colors are better <laughs> and I'll get to it in just a second. Uh, then it's not just the 500 series, the five, is the panel. The next number after that is the stand. So the 500 is a non-adjustable stand. However, the 550 is a height adjustable stand. Uh, likewise, with this monitor, it is an ergonomic stand. That's why it has an eight on the end. So uh, zero, five, and eight stands for the ergonomics or zero, zero, 50, and 80. Right, then you could get a uh, another letter at the end, depending on your monitor. It could be F for FreeSync, G for G-Sync, C for uh, USB-C it has, uh, but these monitors don't have those letters. And then the last letter is either W for white or B for black, and that's the back of the monitor. That's uh, basically what, <laughs> what color is the back of the monitor. Now that we got the naming convention out of the way, let's get into the comparison. I'm going to start with this one because it gave me some problems. Um, it does come with a stand. Uh, here it is. It's not a bad stand. It actually has this nice clipping on mechanism. And this stand goes on this monitor and vice versa. So uh, the stand and the clipping mechanism is great. I'll show you the back. So here is the back of the monitor. Um, this is a ergonomic stand and I always put my screens on uh, these types of stands. So it doesn't matter uh, for me which kind of stand or which kind of screen I get, this always goes in there. Um, yeah, so it has a release mechanism and it's exactly, the, the, the back of this, these two screens are also exactly the same with the exception that this only has um, DisplayPort and uh, HDMI, whereas this one also has USB-C. In full disclosure, right, so this, this laptop that I have now, this is the M1 MacBook. The USB-C cable, which was provided in the box with this monitor, it just doesn't work. It charges, it connects, but it doesn't work for whatever reason. Um, yeah, so there's this uh, little screen over here. And unfortunately, um, in my testing, uh, I've had encountered a lot of problems with this. The viewing angle is the first big problem and the real one when I got it. And I got it within... 20 minutes maybe, I decided I'm sending this back because there's no ways that I will ever work with this screen. For some people, this is a no-no. For most, not a big problem. The viewing angles. When you sit in front of a screen dead on like this, right? 
I always thought viewing angles were that you would see from an angle, right? And I'll think like, why would you care about the viewing angle? Do you like have 20 people gathered around you and they're trying to look from the sides? The viewing angle also works if you walk looking at the center and you're looking to the sides. Right now, as I'm looking to the screen, the colors are dead on center, correct. But as I shift, the color shifts. Here it is, on the side here, it is purple. But as I shift my gaze over here, it becomes a darker purple, the more real color, because the color fades from side to side. You have to go backwards. And the further back you have to be like at least like meter and a half away for the whole screen to be in focus, in color, so that the viewing angle doesn't vary. Whew, that irritates me. Uh, for some people, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, why would it be a problem? It's, um, it's, it's a normal occurrence for the most part, but for graphic designing, you might just look over to the side and you can see the color shift and you presume that that's the way the color is, you know, and you're doing some edits and uh, yeah, then, then you have some weird colors going on there. Um, it's also a little bit unfortunate because this is a 4K display, a pure 4K panel with many, many pixels, right? <laughs> That's a great thing to have. And I would have loved to have the full, you know, not scaled experience. And for that, you have to kind of be a little bit close. <laughs> and when you're close to the screen and the viewing angle, uh, the colors fade from side to side, that kind of defeats the 4K. So you have to scale the screen down. And speaking of scaling, um, this applies to both of these or any 4K display. I found that a 27 inch display, uh, 1440p, that's, that's, you don't need a 4K display when you are on a 27 inch because you're going to have to compress it down anyways. The, the 4K looks way too small, right? If you're on a 27 inch. And I thought 32 should be ideal. And it's like in between. I would even go further. I would go with like a, 34 inch maybe even a 40 inch for a true 4k experience but on the other hand i don't really want a monitor that big on my desk so a 32 inch screen for me personally and I'm, once again this applies to both of these uh yeah uh it, it works fine the biggest problem i had with this screen and i don't know if it's just this screen badly manufactured my personal model is defective or what it could be. When it gets to a certain color of gray, the screen starts to flicker. And every other line, row of pixels uh, are going to be slightly lighter. It's a really weird thing. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm going to show it now. I've made some videos of the problem. Um, so if anybody experienced this kind of problem, please comment down below if you have this screen and let, let's, let's figure out if all screens of this type do it or do I just have a defective model? I'm sending it back to Amazon in any case, so I don't mind. But uh, yes, uh, let me know if anybody else experienced these kind of uh, things. And for the color accuracy, um, I've played around with the settings. Uh, these screens do have uh, a nice profiles and you go to settings here and you got a bunch of uh, settings where you can set up the color profiles. And honestly, it's, it's not color graded out of the box. It's not perfect or the colors are just not able to provide. I, I'm, not, I'm always guessing, are these the correct colors or not? I look at the the screen of my MacBook, right? So that's my reference point. I'm not a color grader, you know. I'm just sort of someone who just expects the screen to work, and kind of hope that I'm more or less <laughs> getting it right. And I, I mean, there are professionals that would probably so totally disagree with me, but I don't have two hundred dollars or even a hundred dollars to spend on a color grading or a color calibration tool. Uh, so I, <laughs> I have to guess plus minus. Yeah, but the color profiles that this one has, um, they were good enough for general use. I, I was a bit scared to use it as a, as a professional device. So now let's move on to this one. And um, I 
for, for some reason I cannot run both these screens. It's a MacBook problem at the same time, so I have to do it. All right, so let's talk about this one. The 880 Ergo. Uh, is this the more superior monitor? Yes, it's double the price. It should be. Uh, the viewing angles, as opposed to this one, are great. Even from like the the anglest of angles, I can see all the colors, and they're not changing colors, right? So they're not fading; they're just there. Um, it's very bright and vibrant, and it feels like it's calibrated. It feels like what I'm seeing on my MacBook, which is a great source of uh, <laughs> the, the Macs just do great screens in general, uh, is much closer to what I see here to what I see there. This, on the other hand, especially in the greys, uh, I feel like the greys are sometimes yellow greys, sometimes pink greys, purple greys. Like, I'm not really sure what's going on with this monitor in terms of color. Of course, it's like minor, it's not like hectic, but it's there. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like this monitor is absolutely great. Uh, it's perfect. You can do color grading on it. It's not the best monitor that there is out there, but it's definitely going to do the job. Uh, when it comes to looking for, like, if you're really a, a professional looking to do the best job, I would go with the BenQ, the PD, either the 27 or the 32 inch, um, or the SW if you really want to fork out some money. But they also come at a higher price premium. The PD could be on sale somewhere close to the amount that this one is. The SW is like four times <laughs> the price that this one is. And yeah, I'm. I'm not at that professional level yet. And I think this is a, is a great place to be. You are a professional who does work for clients, but you're, you're not making a, you know, a, a full featured film that has a budget of $100,000 and you must make sure that the colors there are perfect. If you're doing that kind of work, this is not the monitor for you, right? You want to get the proper color grading one. If you want to make some videos for YouTube and you just, or, or even just short films, yeah, perfect, no problem. I, I would go with this any day. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the back. So yeah, as you can see, it has a great ergonomic stand. And uh, just one thing I want to say that um, when I was looking at reviews for this screen, uh, everybody was going, like, wow, this is the most amazing ergonomic stand ever. And it's a nice stand. And as you can see, when I lift it and I put it down, I don't have to push too hard and it's not too easy to lift up. So it's really well balanced. But is it the best stand in the world? No, is it worth a thousand dollars like the Mac stand? Also, no, it's just a nice ergonomic stand, like it's nothing too special. And if you're buying this monitor over here, just spend an extra 50 bucks and get a any kind of ergonomic stand off Amazon, you're not going to feel it that much, especially that most people don't really move their screen. I do sometimes, not a lot, but sometimes, so therefore, I need an ergonomic stand. Yeah. Um, one bad thing I found about this screen, um, and this is more of a MacBook problem, and I know and I'm aware of this, the USB-C cable, which is supposed to be plugging into your computer and into your screen, and is supposed to drive the 4K signal, doesn't work. It The MacBook receives power from the screen, which is great. And uh, the, um, it also has two USB ports on the back. Those are uh, super speed or USB 3.1 Gen 1. Uh, you can plug them in and the data goes through. But the image, the signal to the screen, no. For some reason, it doesn't. Uh, once again, I know that Mac with the M1 especially, it's still very new, um, has problems supporting all of the screens out there. And for some reason, that just doesn't work. So if you have an M1 chip, and this specific screen, please let me know if the USB-C cable works. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think this is a great screen for my personal use. I think it's perfect. It's great. I can't really critique it any more than that. Um, it's a bit pricey, but you know, 
uh, you only live once and if you spend a considerable amount of time in front of the screen then maybe that investment is worth it if you just want a good screen 4k resolution it's probably one of the cheapest screens out there on the market because sure it costs 350 dollars officially but you can find it on discount you can even get it second hand like 200 maybe something of that sort maybe even slightly under so value wise this 32 inch 4k screen with good enough colors and acceptable viewing angles why not it depends on what you want right so i think i've bragged on a long enough about these two screens so let me try and sum this whole thing up is it really worth it spending the extra bucks and getting the 880 over the 500 or the 550 in my specific case yes i work with video i work with photos i work in photoshop and graphic design and guessing your colors even though they're like 90 percent there on this screen you're you're sure that a pink is going to be a pink but you know just those little details the knowing that the color accuracy is there for client work for me it is worth it even if i have to pay double the price i'm looking for a screen that is color accurate if you just want to watch some movies play some games maybe you can play games on this one but there's a specific monitor if you're a gamer but just browse the internet do consumer type things then this monitor is absolutely worth it for a lower price and you don't need to go with all these bells and whistles of the 95 percent color accuracy that this monitor offers so yeah um at the end of the day the choice is yours um the ergonomic stand and that's uh that's totally bogus you can you can buy an ergonomic stand which is just as good as this one <laughs> for what like 50 dollars off ebay don't be fooled by the ergonomic stand it's nice to have it's not a deal breaker or it's not a deal maker either it's a nice stand bravo <laughs> not worth 300 dollars if that's what you're what you're going for but on the other hand when you buy the ergo you're kind of saving yourself these extra 50 dollars or even a hundred dollars because it's a really nice stand so in reality this is a 350 dollar screen and then this one is what like uh 600 or 650 dollars or whatever because of the stand you discount that price so yes uh, i think i've uh, said enough uh, these two monitors are great i bought this one i'm returning it back to amazon and i have to go with this one the problems that i had with this screen um i don't know if it's just my model <laughs> Uh, other owners of this screen please comment down below if this problem persists on your screen as well like I, for the most part it's great sometimes it flickers here and there and that's why i just can't take it seriously for work but yes um that pretty much sums up these two monitors i hope i have made your choice uh, somewhat easier to make and um yeah <laughs> uh if you liked this content give me a like uh, if you loved it give me a sub and i will see you in the next video that's been nick for angry reviews cheers